Hey everyone, Silver Steeler here. I got a little story. A little story about a 1923 peace dollar. A little story that Yankee stacking would be interested in. So let's jump right in to this beautiful story. I had my first giveaway. Mm -hmm. And it was a 1923 peace dollar, Philadelphia. Common, common date, probably the most common one out of But they were in fantastic shape, which yeah. usually takes that then... It's not so common now. Right. I would have said that would have been anywhere from a 63, 64, 65 MS grade. Somewhere right. in that general vicinity. Probably a 64. Well, he got it the other day, and I was explaining to him. We were chatting back and forth that there's a story behind that. And I've been here so many times, and I sort of forget a little bit of that story. <laughs> so, I mean, the, you go ahead and explain to me, and then I'll have some questions well, about it. Well, some, some of those, I think the one group you bought were ones that when we opened them, they had uh, had a lot of the dye oil still on them. They were, uh, you know, nicely, very nicely struck. Right. Uh, and the reason why uh, they were so impressive, I believe, was because they didn't clean the dyes thoroughly enough after lubricating the dyes. So when you get... Um, when, you, when you manufacture metals or numismatics, they use dyes, as you know. And if mm -hmm. any, anyone watching this probably is pretty familiar with how coins are made, um, you basically have three pieces to the die. You have the, the collar, the, uh, the bottom die, and the top die. Well, periodically those have to be cleaned, serviced, and relubricated to keep them from wearing down and or creating weak strikes. Okay, right. So in between those, when they clean them, service them, and or if necessary, polish the dies, they uh, add a little lubricant, and they're supposed to then remove the excess lubricant before the dies are started back up again. Of course, in any factory situation, things happen. People get distracted, they get busy, they are doing multiple things. Right. And sometimes they don't necessarily remove all the oil. Now, that can cause two things to happen. Either one, you have an extremely well-lubricated coin that gets struck very well, or you could even have a coin that has too much lubrication on there and it causes a, a strike through or a bad die strike. And luckily, the, the group that you were referring to were ones that were actually very well struck. Right. They had re there was not an excessive amount of, of dye oil or dye lubricant But enough to bring out even more detail. Yeah, the, the coin struck extremely well. It was a nice slide on the metal, so to speak. When the when the dies uh, pushed together, the, the metal was well lubricated and went deeply into the recesses and, and made a nicer relief on the coins than you normally see. Hmm. And, and, you know, the questions that I have about that then is, is you had a whole tube of those. Mm -hmm. Did those somehow stay together throughout yeah, almost they, 100 years? They came together as a tube. Right. Yeah, so, we, I mean, but did they even use tubes back in the 1900s? I mean, well, so how were these, basically what my question is, coming off the, let's just call it the assembly line. Right. How did they get grouped up in a group to where well, they, they would stayed have, together? M most of the time they were put in bags, bags back right, then. Right. And then right. the banks would put them into trays or tubes. Then collectors would further put them into some kind of holding device. Okay, so that was um, being done in the early 1900s. It then. was, but they were always almost always cardboard or or right. you know, the, the paper style tubes, which were fairly similar with now. And a lot of times you'll find them that they have very, very, very bad cardboard around them. Well, luckily at some point in time, someone had switched these out to tubes. the the PVC tubes, and right. luck, luckily. Older PVC, if you know anything about numismatics, older PVC, when it interacts with UV light, will break down and become brittle. And, and in right. some cases, if it's if it's right up against the coin, can cause discoloration. Luckily, these didn't have that. But they were in the extreme, they were in extremely yeah, hard so, I mean, when they I, came out. I almost think that this is like their brothers and sisters. They were just minted right after the next yeah. coin. I mean, it was one right after another. And to have something like that almost 100 years later, that they're still, I mean... My impression was they probably were bought by a collector at the time from the bank in the bag. I would assume the, the collector probably bought the entire bag at the time. You know, right. They bought an entire mint bag of right. X many. And each, a lot of times banks would break them down from large bags to small bags, so they may have had them in smaller bags of, say, 100, 200, 250. I've seen all of the above. Right. Individual branch banks put things, in fact, I can show you some bank bags that have different, uh, different banks on them, and they're literally the... Um, the the white linen style bags yeah. and the banks impress their names on a lot of them or have different you know different mm -hmm. values put on them. sometimes they don't even have a value it could be that they would use the same generic bag for every right. uh, every different denomination of coining you know pennies nickels nine nickels dimes quarters halves sure. all of it went in the same bag not together obviously but when someone would come in and say I want to buy two hundred Morgan dollars or two hundred piece dollars they would they would literally go in and say I want two hundred silver dollars and they would get that bag full 
take uh, it home and do with it whatever they want to do. And it's quite common to find. Uh, I mean, to end the whole Yankee thing for Yankee stacking, those are literally coins that were probably produced one right after another. Yeah, there. yeah, most likely and, came right off in the same assembly run. Yeah, right, assembly run. So that's the that's the story behind that. It's not, you know, it's just. I like I like a coin that has a story to it. Yeah. And I told him I remember you saying something about that coin in particular, which you just won the other day. He says it's the best piece of dollar he's got in his collection, <laughs> uh, um, um, condition wise. Yeah. So, you know, it, they are nice. I still got four of them at home, and they're beautiful. And almost tore me just to get rid of that one, but it well, was like, and, yeah, I was like, oh, I got four others, you know. And if memory serves, <laughs> I think the day you were here, you were tempted to buy the tube because I had several tubes, but those yeah. were so nice. You almost bought the tube. You left, and two days later, called and said, "Hey, you still have them?" And yeah. you know, they're gone. Yeah, I should have jumped. <laughs> so yes, I should have jumped on that whole roll of peace dollars, but I did not. I got five of them. It wasn't too bad. So there you go, Yankee stacking. There's the story behind that coin. I like the story behind the coin, and right now I am in the process of uploading my entire visit to my local coin shop. It's a long video. It's about 40 to 50 minutes long, but a lot of entertaining things in there. He talks about a shipwreck. Um, we go through part of his uh, collection that he's got out. I buy some American Silver Eagles. I buy some gold. That video is going to premiere on this Sunday at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I will make sure I'm on there watching it with you when it premieres, so I'll be able to answer any questions you might have. Be sure to check that out. It's a pretty cool video. Anyway, that's going to bring this video to a close. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. I'll see you on the premiere.